Today's guest is artist and illustrator Natasha Kennedy. Natasha is the illustrator behind all of the Fat Cat books that are available through Lexham Press. I've mentioned the Fat Cat books before. They've come up in a few different conversations, in particular my conversation with Lexham Press associate publisher Todd Haynes. But today, Natasha and I talk in particular about the planning and visual development that has gone into this children's series of books. If you haven't seen these books, they're so beautifully illustrated all by Natasha herself. So she talks to us today about her inspiration and some of the theological decisions that have been made um, as these books have developed and as they have come out one by one. This episode happens to be coming out just before the release of the next Fat Cat book, which is on the Ten Commandments and written by Hal Sinkbell. So we also talk a little bit about that book in particular and the way that Natasha has has chosen to illustrate the Ten Commandments through the life of Jesus in a way that clearly depicts what the commandments are and yet leaves readers, both adults and children alike, with joy and with comfort that these commandments are gifts for them, um, that the that God's law is good and can be good, even when we know that as sinners we are incapable of fulfilling it and we need someone to come and fulfill it for us. This is Outside Ourselves. I'm Kelsey Clambera, and here is today's show. Hey, Natasha, how's it going today? Thanks so much for being here. It's going great. Thanks so much for having me on here, Kelsey. Yeah, I uh, I always start pretty much the same way with guests. Um, I think that you are actually the first artist to be on Outside Ourselves, so I'm excited about that. But I would love if you want to just tell people who you are and a little bit about what you do to get to get us going. Sure. Um... Yeah, so I'm uh, Natasha Kennedy. I illustrate the Fat Cat books, their children's book series. Um, so that's kind of what I'm on here for. But I do other other illustrations here and there. And um, I write fiction and I homeschool my kids and I work from home. So art is kind of this nice thing that I get to do uh, in the background of all that. Yeah. It's really great. That's awesome. I didn't know that you wrote fiction are you like what besides the genre of fiction what what do you write <laughs> oh you know mostly like adventure fantasy for adults <laughs> not That's not awesome. adult adventure fantasy but you know the <laughs> decent kind <laughs> okay <laughs> That's so cool yeah. is it just kind of like um like as you have time or have you made like, are you working on any sort of series? I'm, I'm just curious. I'm going completely <laughs> yeah, off track what we're supposed to talk about, but I, um, I want to know more. I've given, I've given a lot of time to it this last year. I, um, I've had a really bad health year. I lost the ability to eat food, and so I, I spent a lot of time in hospitals, a lot of time wow. in bed and stuff. And so I just got really into writing, and I just finished. I just finished a big trilogy, <laughs> big oh fantasy gosh. trilogy that I'm gonna um, release pretty soon here. But I was just really inspired, really inspired by my hard year. So it got me writing a lot. I was probably doing like 10,000 words a day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just, just so life-giving. So yeah, it's a little That's background. awesome. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I wanna know more about where to, I can find that eventually. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'll keep you posted. But yeah, keep me updated on that. Um, I'm sorry to hear you had a bad year too. That's crazy how are you doing now Thanks. with everything um i i feel like i'm definitely getting to a, a a new stable place where i'm like adjusting to like i'm more adjusted to the to the disability now of of you know not being able to to swallow and so um it's actually really it might play into this interview because it's really flavored the fat cat books that i've done mm -hmm. you know um i've been you know i was illustrating uh the Lord's prayer. And, you know, I was illustrating Jesus fasting in the desert while I was going through, you know, I illustrated that oh, wow. one of those pages, uh, at the hospital. And I was like, this is really meaningful. Like, um, yeah. so I feel like, 
yeah, like Jesus has been very present and constant this year for me. So like hardest year of my life probably, but also like the most beautiful, you know? Mm. Um, but I'm getting to a stable place and I'm and I'm learning to live with it and and even like really like enjoying what my life looks like now. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I hear that's it's just so interesting. I how often you hear that about suffering and hardship. I've mentioned this before on the show, but we've have we have a few friends that have had really hard years for different reasons and it's like they say the same thing. Like it just makes their not not that it at all minimizes their suffering. And I and their uh the friends I'm thinking of are really good at not doing that. Um yeah. I think it makes their joy so much fuller and more meaningful. And I think that that's such an incredible thing to be able to talk about as Christians and yeah. um experience doesn't mean that we have the answers and it doesn't even mean that suffering always like teaches us something. I think sometimes yeah. we we go to that too quickly as yeah as Christians. But um yeah it does make what is joyful and good so much more meaningful and richer in a in a certain yeah. way. I don't know. Has that kind of been your yeah. experience? Definitely. I feel like um I feel like suffering can really I feel like you can react to suffering in two ways. You can like the, the kind of language I use in my journey is like, I either fall asleep to the suffering and just try to tune out, veg out, watch yeah. movies, you know, whatever. Um, or you can, when, when you choose to be awake to your suffering, it's, it, it sobers you and you, and it actually feels like um, you see things so much clearer. Things are so much simpler. The need for God is so much simpler. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, you get this like really, wide awake um like calm peaceful presence in the world i don't i don't yeah. I'm not sure how else to describe it but yeah it means that you i think meaningful things like are more accessible like you're more able to absorb them i would mm. say in times yeah. of suffering like um yeah yeah i that definitely has rings true for me like it's yeah. it's not it's definitely so hard but at the same time, there's like a real beauty that comes out of it. And mm -hmm. I, I'm actually like, you know, I, I always process things in book form. So I'm I'm working on a kind of like a memoir book about uh, my year mm -hmm. of fasting. And one of the things that has just really strikes me about um, fasting is like this, this Christian practice to, um, to limit yourself and to yeah. not indulge and not um, eat for a time and that what that does is it makes you know fasting and feasting are always kind of like juxtaposed mm -hmm. and it makes the times of feasting so much more special when you have a practice of fasting and what fasting does is it it makes you realize that Jesus is enough um, that you know when you're not eating when you're not filling your needs instantly um, you get this like realization that um, Jesus is enough yeah he's enough yeah. and and you're not in you're, you're I, I always I got so scared when I couldn't eat you know I love eating and drinking all that and I got so scared like uh, how am I going to cope with life because food is my coping mechanism yeah and um and it was just so amazing to realize like oh I don't need this like I thought I needed it you know yeah anyway oh. that's going very deep but no yeah. no that's, <laughs> thanks, I think we're all insight yeah we're all we're on the same page and there's there is you're right it's this we think, and I think sometimes we we uh, position suffering as like it's. We were like, "Oh, we're made weak so that we're strong," but it's actually this was. Um, I don't know if you know who Chad Bird is. He works at fifteen seventeen, but he said something the other day about like uh, Jesus gives us crosses not to make us strong, but to like basically kill us to make us realize that we're dependent on Him and that in our weakness, we don't then all of a sudden, um, like gain endurance as if we're like a marathon yeah. runner is kind of his point. Yeah. We just realize G we are completely dependent on Jesus. That's the whole, the whole point yeah. of it. So yeah. yeah um, that's really cool. Well, thanks. Thanks for sharing about that. And I, yeah, maybe it'll come up as we're talking more, but I do want to hear, more about the Fat Cat series. I've had Todd Haynes on the show, um, who's uh, a 
associate publisher at, at Lex and Press, which is what Fat Cat, the Fat Cat books are under. And I know he's played like a, a very integral role in kind of the development of the books, but you are actually, I believe, the only person that's worked on every single book because there's been different authors, um, but yeah. you are the illustrator for <laughs> for all of them. So can you tell us a little bit about the series in general, uh, what it's about, and yeah, just the what you guys are doing with Fat Cat? Yeah, sure. Um so yeah, it's a it's called it's the Fat Cat series. Um, Fat Cat, you know, kind of drawing from like our play on Fat Catechism. Um, so Catechism being like the foundations of our faith, and so we zoomed in to to kick off the series with Apostles' Creed, Lord's Prayer, Ten Commandments, kind of the original Catechism, the original foundations, and yeah. so um, so yeah, that's kind of like what the series is all about is introducing like giving children like resources children and families um mm -hmm. resources for the foundations of what we believe and um and it's also called fat cat because we we put a fat cat in it he's, he's <laughs> on every he's on every page he's on every page it tends to be the things that kids like most that you can yes. find them on every page <laughs> the other thing you can find on just about every page as well is Jesus. Um, we wanted to illustrate all of these things through the life of Jesus, yeah. um, making him front and center, making, you know, he is the center of all our theology, everything we believe in. Um, and so what we want is like to create this, um, this children's series where kids can um, enter and emotionally, you know, see Jesus's uh, compassion in his, in his face and, um it we wanted it to feel accessible like it's not like oh your faith is so high and hard to understand it's like well it's it's yeah. so easy that a fat cat hangs out there <laughs> you know um so it's like we want it to feel um beautiful reverent um accessible and we want both parents and kids to feel like they're getting richness out of it mm -hmm. um and so being kind of like i i kind of get to be at the um kind of one of the core group for the fat cat team um yeah. like we kind of like dream up dream stuff up and i get to be in the inner circle todd's basically the the fat cat mastermind you know he's the, <laughs> the man behind the curtain and um and yeah so we so i get to be a part of uh yeah i get to be uh the art vision and um working with the team to be like how can we get everything we want uh, to come across through the art, whether it's theology or symbolism or something that makes sense to kids. Like mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I used to, I used to um, do biblical art for like, um, like seminary teachers and stuff for fun. Okay. You know, like I did one that was like a, it was like a, a cover picture for a, a class on Leviticus. And it was like, it, the the picture was like in the form of a chiasm because Leviticus is a chiasm and mm -hmm. like all, all the different elements played in there. And it's like, that's really fun and nerdy, but no kid is going to know what a chiasm <laughs> is. You know, so it's like when you're illustrating theology, like you, you, it can be, it can be, you know, hard to, hard to understand, but what, what yeah. we want is for it to be both deep, but also understandable to a kid. Yeah. So that's kind of, kind of the role I play is getting to cast vision and then, um plan out the pages and 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 do all the art so yeah, yeah it's been it's probably like one of my favorite projects i've ever worked on um, that's yeah, awesome really rewarding. yeah i mean the art is amazing and i totally agree just from a you know an, a parent and someone that's viewed the books like it it is so approachable but rich with meaning and layer and um i will tell you our three-year-old is just now kind of getting into them and the cat is all he cares about. He's like a little <laughs> bit, as probably most three-year-old boys are, a little bit theologically allergic <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he told me the other day that he told his teacher about his Jesus and cat book and she wanted to see it. So Aww. I know. So, so I sweet. thought that that was a pretty good, hopefully that's high praise for, for you guys, <laughs> that something is sticking in his, in his mind. Is this your first project for like children's illustration? Is this like other work that you've done in the past or is it kind of a new um, direction? It's, it's definitely like, it's definitely like a new development for, for me. I, I have done children's books in the past, but they were just like, you know, just self projects that I, yeah. you know, um, released myself. Um, 
and it was much smaller scale, you know, more like watercolor art and, and very yeah. simple. Um, this was, this felt like kind of like leveling up, I think as an illustrator was like, oh, a publisher, I'm not self-publishing. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm working with a team and, and they have requests and, you know, like, yeah, it's, it feels, it feels a lot, a lot bigger, um, which is exciting. It's really, yeah, really exciting. And I think it's pushed me to become a better artist mm. in a really big way because I'm having to, you know, having someone check my work. I'm having people say like, yeah. sorry, you're going to have to redraw that. That's not good enough. You know, things that you wouldn't usually do to yourself as a, <laughs> as a freelance artist. So, right. Yeah. That's awesome. Where have you, are there specific places you would say you've pulled inspiration from as you've kind of developed um, both through the team and then as you've worked on one book after another, um, you've developed the ideas or specific places that you kind of go to for inspiration? Yeah. Um, yeah. When we were first kind of dreaming up the Fat Cat series, I, I'm very much inspired by uh, I, Ivan Earl, the painter. Um, as okay. an artist, he, like familiar work for most people would be uh, the art for the old Sleeping Beauty Disney movie. Yeah. Um, okay. I can see so, that. So yeah, if you if you like look in the background at, at his trees and nature and um, it's so unique and beautiful. And one of the reasons why we kind of like wanted to use that as inspiration is because um, this is a style of artwork that feels, uh, it feels very accessible, but at the same time, beautiful and reverent. And that's kind mm. of what we wanted. Um, I've also like, really inspired by uh like byzantine iconography and there's just so much symbolism yeah. in that type of art and mm -hmm. um and what so what we want is like we want this art to feel timeless but also feel like it's for kids and so yeah um so as an as an illustrator i definitely like i mean you just like um you just google like ivan Durrell trees <laughs> you know he he does like the most iconic kinds of trees so I, and if you look at the fat cat books you'll be like oh okay so that's where she pulled that style you know yeah. um so he's definitely like when when we were putting together the vision it, he was like his his work is a really big part of it it's really beautiful um that's awesome so yeah i would say those are my main inspirations okay and i'm curious what is your um like before this series what was your experience with the catechism which as you mentioned and i just like to repeat it because uh a lot of this has been new for me in the last few years as well. The catechism is the Apostles' Creed, the Lord's Prayer, and the Ten Commandments uh, historically. What mm -hmm. what has your experience been with the catechism? And then would you say that this project has changed uh, whatever that experience was? Has it changed mm -hmm. it at all for you? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, so I was raised uh, non-denominational evangelical. Yeah. Um, and that's still like, I'm still very much a part of that world, love that yeah. world. Um, and so, so while I was like taught things like Lord's Prayer um, and, you know, oh, there, we sing, right. you know, I knew this Rich Mullen song that is about, about yes. the uh, Apostles' Creed, you know? Yep. Best, oh yeah. Best song ever, you know? Classic. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, I, I knew all these things, like they are definitely like in, informing my faith. Um, but then, uh but I wasn't necessarily taught. And I mean, like, I know the word catechism can mean a few different things to different people. Mm -hmm. but cause it's, cause, so it's like, you know, often used as a way of describing like a whole question and answer, you know, type of teaching children their faith, very yeah. formal. Um, I was never really brought up with anything like that. And so even the idea of teaching, teaching kids words that they say and, and memorize um, throughout their walk in life. Um, I memorize a lot of scripture, which I think is awesome but I hadn't done a ton of that and so as I started working uh with this team um and my family's actually transitioned into being Anglican um after we moved to Scotland we, that was just something we for a time we, we just wanted to uh, connect more with the historical church and, mm -hmm. and have more family liturgy and more involvement with the church calendar and so um my since my family's all we're all uh half British uh, citizenship we're like okay this hmm. feels like a good place to start you know for our family and, yeah. um and it's still like it's you know it's still protestant but has liturgy like it was like a right. it was like a cool you know gateway into um some more some you know experiencing older church tradition and so 
we started yeah. realizing like, oh, we're, we're saying the Lord's prayer in church service altogether. We're saying the apostles creed. We're saying the 10 commandments during Lent, you know, um, that, so I started like getting more involved there, but doing the fat cat books, it was like, I'm making these books as a resource for parents and kids, but I'm like, oh, I'm literally learning them as I'm doing it. You yeah. Know? Um, like for the apostles creed book, when I read Ben Meyer's text and I read his, he wrote a, an adult Version, yes which i think is which is excellent yeah, yeah i heard it what is it yeah called? so there's like uh yeah. the apostles, oh, the apostles creed, creed. and it's <laughs> yeah and it's just like it's for lexham's christian essential series so they 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 do these little pocket you know like handbooks and they're just they're just gorgeous so i read this mm -hmm. as i was preparing to illustrate that and i was like oh my gosh i'm learning so much so yeah, it's like Fat Cat was kind of my introduction and, and it got my kids into it because they're very much like watching me do every page and watching yeah. me color. And then when it gets released, we all read it together and they all want to memorize the Apostles' Creed, you know? So um, so yeah, I feel like I've definitely like been a student at the same time <laughs> that, I was, uh, that, I'm, that I'm involved in something I'm supposed to be teaching people. So yeah. 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 That's, um, that's how I feel too. Like I feel like even going through, as I was preparing to talk to you today, like going through the, just the fat cat books again, I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's really good. Like, that's a really good connection I hadn't thought about before. Um, and I do love the, you mentioned this already, but the, the way that you guys are choosing to, uh, talk about the catechism through the life of Jesus and how he's so integral to everything is really, really clear. And I think important because so often, theology or Bible books for kids are missing Jesus. It's so crazy to me. I don't, I, I feel like that's yeah. um, and not always a problem. I think a lot of people are addressing that, but I, I love that you guys are making that uh, the emphasis when it comes to the art you talked, you, you mentioned already kind of that you've, you've had to make, you know, some theological decisions about the art. What would you say are some of those decisions that you've made um, visually that tie into theology specifically? Um, well, yeah, I mean, just by nature of just right off the bat, well, big theological question that a lot of people disagree on is do you depict Jesus? You know, is that like a, Oh yeah. Is, yeah. is that, you know, it's like, there's, there's a, right. there's a wide, um, there's like a, a quite a few, people I know a lot of people in the Baptist Southern Baptist movement you know they they think that it's um breaking the second commandment you know yeah and so already just by making these books we we uh picked a side you know <laughs> so yeah. it's like you can't you can't even do a children's book about Jesus without um taking a stance um and so <laughs> it's pretty clear which which one I, when I which yeah one we, we took here um and and my kind of like I don't feel defensive about it. I think people who disagree are very, very respectful in their disagreement. But um, my, my normal defense is, um, is that Jesus came as a human, you know, that he was, the, yeah. that he, he was, you know, quote unquote, broke the second commandment by becoming the invisible God being made visible. And so, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's kind of my, that's um, my quote unquote stance there. And then as you zoom in and you start doing books like the apostles creed, it's like, okay, this is the foundation of our faith. And again, um, some denominations leave out the line, uh, descended into hell or yeah. descended into the dead, you know, hell being the word for the dead, not uh, mm -hmm. punishment. Jesus didn't get punished, but he went uh, as a conqueror, you know, mm -hmm. setting the captives free, you know, uh, Psalm 68 and, and stuff like that. Um, and so again, that's like, Oh, taking a stance you know yes yeah. we, we drew a page where jesus is going triumphantly into hades and and pulling up adam and eve you know god's mm -hmm. first children who fell um so a very symbolic page um and again that's another kind of way that we've tackled some things is like um through symbolism uh so mm -hmm. a lot of it, most of it's jesus life but you know like the page uh in the apostles creed that's like um the resurrection of the body it's like oh wow yeah. What do, you, what do you draw there? Like, um, right. Obviously, you could draw Jesus' uh, resurrection, but but yeah, like, um, how do we how do we draw the resurrection body? So we we just went and like illustrated the Valley of Dry Bones, um, and so you yeah. have all these 
all these bones like coming alive and being resurrected into um into people in their white robes and and there is like a, a controversy not too controversial drawing fat cat as a skeleton um, oh i didn't even there yep. he is you can, you can find that one in there that's that's where he is on that page it was a, it was a freebie um <laughs> so it's like you know conquering some of these pages through like um you know where the where the bible draws from it's like the idea of the resurrection yeah. um it's in the old testament as well and um so yeah and, and then uh things like the the you know for that one the life everlasting there's a lot of symbolism on that page you know you have um a tree of life flowing out of the throne where jesus is mm. sitting you have like communion by his side and you have um the like, writing up on the the walls of the new jerusalem uh it's like a lot of stuff that maybe kids won't won't catch but it, it's t it's giving them pictures and giving them images to that are teaching them theology even if they don't know it yeah you know and it's giving um, texture to the overall story in a way that is really beautiful yeah yeah thank you yeah, yeah. so i don't know if that answers a bit of your no. question i was i've i've just been curious because i i'm sure i you know I could just imagine that there's been a lot of conversations about how to illustrate and how to depict certain things. Um, so that's, it's, that's always interesting and cool to kind of hear um, a little bit more about. And we're, um, I'm looking forward to, I've seen the digital version of the newest Fat Cat book, which is coming out in January. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. 2024. Yeah, yeah, the Ten Commandments. Um, and wanted to I've talk. I've got the only the only copy right here that the is in print. <laughs> I just that's awesome. took it home from the Bellingham office. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, I would love to talk a little bit about that book specifically. Um, yeah. written by Hal Sinkbell, and uh, I know when Todd was on a while back, he talked about kind of the challenge of both talking about and then illustrating the Ten Commandments in a way yeah. that presents them um, joyfully and, and also as gift. And I think that the way mm -hmm. Hal words it is he says his law protects the gifts he gives me, which I love that because it's still kind of separating it from the gift of gospel, making that distinction. Yeah. But can yeah. you talk a little bit about like the planning for this book and illustrating it? Was it different than the others in any way or did you have you learned stuff that you've now implemented into this book um what kind of went into the the illustrations for ten commandments yeah um yeah this was definitely like we for the three core books we saved it to the last because we knew yeah. it would be hard yeah um it's like so easy to go in a in a um kind of legalistic fundamental do not yeah direction um and also like behavior focus like you, you yes. might see a lot of children's books on the ten commandments be do this don't do this um because this is good this is bad yeah um and so already i loved um hal's perspective on a gift that you're protecting you know yeah um and you know you see that in uh you know when jesus talks about the the fifth commandment you know having a promise like there's something good that comes from this. This isn't like do this or you're bad, you know, but it's actually, uh, we're protecting, um, like God has given us boundary lines and um, to protect us, you know, it's right. like putting in fencing into a yard so that you can run freely, safely and, and happily in, in your yard, you know? Um, so I, I loved just coming into the book um, knowing that we were going to be doing uh, joyful spreads where where children yeah. are either watching this demonstrated or being a, a part of it or having an example. Um, so, for example, uh, like, I mean, and some of these are, are hard, you know, like, uh, don't right. commit adultery. What yeah. are you going to tell kids <laughs> there? Um, and uh, and I, I really like the the direction that we took um you know even when you go when you look at some old like woodcut um uh depictions of of this commandment um a lot of people went to the wedding of cana which i found which i thought was quite interesting mm -hmm. um jesus you know attending a wedding and um turning the water into wine 
Yeah. And um, you have kids there helping him and stuff. And it, um, and so, yeah, every, every time we kind of like say the gift of what this is giving us. And, and this talks about like how, like why you save your body for certain things and, and how mm-hmm. it should be used in a way that um, is, is good and, and beautiful, you know? Um, and so you have like this depiction of, of marriage and um, I, there, there's this really cool line that um, just as Jesus blessed marriage at Cana and turned ordinary water into wine, he turns my ordinary obedience into joy as I live in chastity, hmm. which I know like the word chastity, some people can kind of get, you know, uptight about, but I think it it's a virtue that we don't talk a whole lot about. Yeah. You know, I, and, well, it, it, and you guys, in, sorry to interrupt you, you guys yeah. included a whole like note about that at the end of the book, which I really, I thought was really helpful for people. Do you want to talk a little bit more about just chastity and why you guys put that <laughs> note at the end because I thought it was really helpful and um something I wouldn't have necessarily thought to do but makes a lot of sense yeah um every once in a while we'll do this where we'll we'll put a note in the back I mean Apostles Creed we we said the Holy Catholic Church and and put a note in the back like when we say Catholic we mean global church you know right uh things like that because certain words carry certain like uh triggers or or right or uh, you know, like yeah, they they for some people it takes them on a on a brain path that is right is a dark place for them, or you know, um, you know this can feel like you know p- the purity culture days and um, right, like w- w- that's what we don't want. You know, it's like we don't. We, but, and so um, putting putting things like that, I'm trying to find where they ended up putting it because I is it in the to parents section? Yeah, we referenced John Kleinig's book, uh, wonderfully right. made a, a Protestant uh, theology of the body amazing yeah. book i just like yeah. recommend everyone read that book but, it's so good um yeah oh you, you uh, i'm sure you know about it yeah um, i've uh i had him on a while ago and oh, cool. that book has been like life-changing for me so yes everyone should read that book i've yes. i feel like as often as i can plug like you're saying as often as i can plug that <laughs> book and a few others that y'all have done or we've done i do it so anyway john oh, climbing so great yeah 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 like um you know i feel like even in our culture today we're moving in this direction of like separating our bodies from our our faith you know yeah. and um our body is us you know when we go right. to heaven our our bodies are resurrected like this is like you and your body are not too different your body isn't like a container for you like it is you and yeah um and so like having this be a part of the 10 commandments and like like Hey, this your body is a gift, and caring mm-hmm. for it and reserving it for specific purposes is is for your good, and it's it's mm-hmm. beautiful, you know. Um, and it's really like, yeah, this is a touchy subject this, these days. The the body, yeah. There's yeah. like so, so we can, you know, talk forever about everyone's disagreements about the body, but um, so but we we don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater, <laughs> you know. It's like we want right. we don't want to say like. Oh, purity culture is terrible. So um, kids, do whatever you want to your body. <laughs> you know, it's like, right. oh, I don't think that's the answer either, you know? Yeah. Um, so I like, yeah, I, I actually quite like that page. I talk a lot on this show about uh, behavior modification comes up a lot and how that's, when that's the focus of Christianity, it's really not, um, it's not any different than a lot of things out there. Like you can look yeah. to a lot of places in culture, you can look to a lot of religions that, will give you advice and sometimes bad advice, but sometimes good advice about how to behave and how to be obedient. And so making that the central point of Christianity is, I think, and I, I I think that you guys are kind of proving this in um, this series and other, and Lexham in general and what you're publishing, I think it's a mistake, but to keep um, Christ as center, as we've already said, is, is so helpful and important. And I love that um, this book in particular, which we're talking, you know, you're talking about the law, you're talking about obedience to an extent. I think it ends like every page ends with um, a prayer for God to take away your sin for the forgiveness of sins, which is so important. Um, And I love too, that it starts with the, the um, it's the commandment sometimes called this or just the um mm-hmm. 
the announcement that I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You guys start with that and end with that in this book, right? Yeah. Can you talk yeah. about that decision and then also how the illustrations kind of change from the beginning to end? Because it's two completely different pictures yeah. of those people. Yeah. Yeah. I I I loved that. Um, and, and this was really like Todd really pushed for this direction of like the Ten Commandments isn't just the list. It it's bookended. You know, it's yeah. it's got this inclusio of like, um, I am the Lord your God. And yeah. and I know that I, I'm pretty sure like some people um teach uh that when Jesus references the law, he's like talking about that. Like I am the Lord your God. Like that mm. is that is the commandment is who 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 our God is. Um and so yeah, this was a really this was a hard probably I would say probably one of my hardest assignments was these bookends of I'm the Lord your God mm. who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Um and so I had to we had to take a few tries with this one before we go, yeah. right? But I, I know, but I love it because Todd had this idea um for the symbolism of if we want to show the Passover, because that's this is all calling back to the Passover, you know. Um and so what we did was we did we depicted the Passover, but at the at the foreground you have um Jesus on the cross. Yeah. And then in the background you have the the doorposts looking like the other two crosses with the hmm. the blood on the doorpost. And, yeah. and and I've kind of matched that on the back of Jesus, like right, you know, giving you visual symbolism, visual um allusion, you know, to mm -hmm. what Jesus' death is alluding to. Um, or one one of the many. Um and so so this one is it's kind of like tying in the giving of the law has always pointed to Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. that like Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Um, this isn't just a, a rule book. This is um, Jesus is, has died so that he can give us these things. He has died so that we can live this way. Mm. Um, and so I feel like it's real, it's these bookends are really important because they're kind of like setting the tone for the giving of the law, you know, the giving mm. of, we're going to be telling you these these rules and these things to keep and you know these promises to hold on tightly to but it's all done through jesus on the cross you know it's like yeah. the whole giving of law we started with passover um and then the last one you know when you read the ten commandments um uh in exodus it, it yeah it begins and ends with i am the lord your god who brought you out of egypt out of the land of slavery um and so this one again I had to like redraw like 50 times. So it's like letting you look at it here. Um, <laughs> I love it. I love that we um, can show the pictures. It's awesome. I know. It's so I, helpful. Yeah, I, I don't usually get to do that. Sometimes I open a book yeah. and I'm like, well, I'm looking at a, a picture of Jesus. <laughs> um, so this one is interesting because again, it's, it's, it's referencing Exodus and going yeah. through coming out of, coming out of Egypt through the waters into the, into the promised mm -hmm. land. Um, even though they technically went into the wilderness, but um, <laughs> we have here is like the gates of Hades being broken out. Yeah. Of. We have this kind of triumphal procession, you know, calling back to Psalm 68 um, and Jesus leading his people through um, like with a processional cross and, you know, coming, coming out of sin and darkness through the waters of um, baptism and into, into new life. And so, we wanted to we wanted to be giving kids this imagery of like these are the things that make the Ten Commandments possible for us. Jesus dying and then Jesus giving us new life where he's leading his people into the kingdom where they can live like this. Like we hmm. get to live like this. We I've brought you to a safe place where you're my people and this is what you look like. And it's not yeah. so that you can shove yourself into a mold, but it's so that you can um live thrive it is so that you can yeah. thrive in jesus you know this yeah. is about thriving it's not about do's and don'ts you know yeah yeah i those two pictures immediately made me think too of his death and resurrection being the fulfillment of the law and how we need yeah. both of those and then yeah yeah this tie to new life in the sense that like the new man or new woman in christ which is how we would i would say it probably in my tradition um mm -hmm that's the then the description of who we are like we just are yeah. these people we are these people that uh have the fulfillment and that now describes like the way 
we Mm. are living, which totally changes the way that you're thinking about, okay, I've got to do X, Y, and Z. So God approves of me. Um, which is so often how we, we think of it, um, that has been fulfilled for you. And so you just get to do it freely. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought the, the joy, especially in that last, which, you know, obviously that last image is so joyous is just really beautiful. You guys, you did a great job of, of illustrating that and showing that. So, yeah. Um, you're a mom, you said, you've already said kind of your kids, you know, go through these with you and they're a part of the process a little bit. Have you seen, uh, the books change their understanding at all of Jesus, um, of the Bible, the, the biblical narrative? Is there anything that kind of stands out to you? And I don't know, how old are your kids? Are they elementary? Yeah, they're uh, 10, 8, 7, and 2. Okay. Yeah. You got a, you got a range. So I got, a, got a range. So I've like, yeah. I just finished a baby board book and I was play testing it on uh, my two-year-old. It's like, that's this awesome. is handy. This is like my little focus <laughs> group, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, it's definitely like, I think it's played a much bigger role than I could have ever imagined. And it's made yeah. me think like, man, I don't know what, I'm not sure what my kids would know at this point about, geez, I'm sure I would have been teaching them stuff, but if I hadn't have been working these basically throughout their childhood, um, I started illustrating uh, 2020 during uh, oh, wow. lockdown. That's when I started yeah. the first, uh, the Apostles Creed book. And, okay. um, and it just was like something really clicked for my kids Mm. and art does that emotions do that seeing like seeing jesus be there so much like he's everywhere in these books like yeah um the way my kids talk about him the way my oldest daughter she she'll focus in on certain pages and be like i really like jesus face in this one i really like his how he's his Mm. expression in that one i'm like wow you know it's like there's there's a personality becoming attached to their lord and you know i I've heard it said, and I, I quite agree with this, that the gospel is um, Jesus life, you know, that um, yeah. the gospels is the story of Jesus, the story of his life on this earth. And, um, and so like by illustrating it and pulling out all these very specific moments and being able to boil it down so much that with each of these stories in Jesus life, a kid is suddenly understanding the importance, you know, like when I illustrated the, in the Easter book, the, um, you know, Jesus healing, uh, Bartimaeus, um, his, of his blindness. Um, he, there's this, the moment, you know, that it says is like, um, he threw off his cloak and, and got up and ran, you know, and Jesus said, um, you're forgiven. And I, uh, hmm. um, my dad is blind. So their, uh, their papa, wow. um, their grandpa is blind. And so when I do Bartimaeus, I actually based his, um, his look off my dad. And so for my kids personally, when they see this page, they see this man's blindness being healed right in this moment when he's looking at Jesus. And it's like, there's so much that they're getting from that one story because they've now seen it like depicted. And there's this Mm. truth like, yeah, when when Papa sees Jesus, he's going to have his sight back again, you know, like um, just stuff like that. Like they're just, it's their faith is becoming more more personal i'm not trying to like take credit you know for like yeah no no i think jesus gets all the credit here but like when you spend this much time you know each page each spread is probably you know eight to ten hours of work and i i screen mirror onto the tv and the kids will just sit there watching the drawings come to life they'll watch me pencil it out and then start filling in colors and they're like oh you should add a put fat cat in that basket you know like they're just (laughs) and so it's like they're watching all the details of his life kind of unfold you know like stroke by stroke and i i think that's got it's done something for my faith you know like yeah illustrating jesus and um him withstanding his trials like while i'm withstanding my trials i'm like i'm having a different kind of connection with jesus because art makes you spend so much time on one moment you know Mm. um Mm. so yeah i guess the the short answer would be yes (laughs) that makes me just wish that the church had more art especially the, like Hmm. the American church. I mean, I know that that's kind of been somewhat of a push in some circles in the last few decades, probably, but 
what has your experience been with that as an artist and a Christian? Like, do you feel like that's been something that's supported or hmm. um, kind of a new connection that, that has been made for you? Yeah. Um, it's a really interesting question. I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that. Um, I, uh, I mean, naturally it was like, I studied theology and I did a lot of like nerdy biblical art, you know, for professors yeah. and stuff. Um, and so it, in, in the one sense, I can be quite picky about biblical art because in one picture alone, like you're saying something, you're saying mm -hmm. uh, so much theology, you know? Um, and so on the one hand, I'm like, if you're going to be drawing biblical art, like you have to do it with like fear and trembling because like, mm -hmm. yeah, if you get something wrong and someone looks at your picture, someone who can't read looks at your picture, that's all they get. It's like, you better, you better do the right things, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. Um, yeah. And then on the, and then on the other side of the spectrum, it's like, yeah, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, lo I love that <laughs> saying, but it's true where it's just like, you know, the Bible that I keep returning to with my kids is the the old dorky beginner's Bible that I grew up mm -hmm. with. There's just something about that book and the emotion on people's faces, the simplicity. And they, my kids love the one where like the disciples are hiding in their room when, when Jesus like, you know, as Walks resurrected. <laughs> yeah. And they have this like, <laughs> open this like eye slot and this guy's like looking through and he's got this huge nose poking out and they just will like spend so much time on the page just like that's laughing. awesome but it's like yeah they're putting humor to the moment it's like why are the disciples hiding you know jesus yeah. is alive why yeah. are you hiding you know but um like yeah art makes it it, it uh conjures emotions it it yeah. um it activates something different than words do and i i i'm a firm believer that the words of the bible is are alive and they are jesus but pictures, um, pictures are kind of like our way as, as humans, as, as many, you know, you know, creative beings of God, it's like our way of interacting with his truth and mm -hmm. whether or not you get something super wrong, <laughs> uh, theologically, like just by spending time doing it or by spending time looking at something and pondering it, you are going to connect with it because that's what humans do. We riff off mm -hmm. God's creation. We interact with it. We, 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 you know, we, get our hands in it. And yeah, I, I think that's good for everyone. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's awesome. Um, I agree. I think there's something that assists the words, um, and the power of the words in imagery that we desperately need. And, uh, I know like you're saying it change it changes things for me, you know, whether it's like watching a old, weird movie about Jesus uh yeah. there's still like it's helpful in some way to see it to see his life depicted or reading reading a book that's illustrated beautifully I think that's very helpful especially for kids we need yeah. more of that so um yeah. well okay so this the Ten Commandments kind of finishes the like we we're talking about the original series but you guys have done a, also part of the series is the King of Easter and the King of Christmas are there mm -hmm. plans to do more fat cat books or are you guys kind of wrapping up the project mm -hmm. with the release of this one? Well, I think if you ask Todd, who's the series editor, he would be like, Oh, we're only, we're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, it's, we have a lot of really fun ideas um, and a lot of really cool ideas. Um, I can definitely say I just finished, like I said, the baby uh, board book. It's just yeah, that's about awesome. Jesus. Um, we were just, chatting this morning about like what nailing down the title of the book so I can't tell you title but um but it's basically Jesus a little little poem about Jesus with lots of animals and that's awesome <laughs> lots of Jesus <laughs> um it'll probably be the only baby board book you buy that has the crucifixion but tastefully done <laughs> but it's like this is our faith <laughs> um yeah put it in there <laughs> yeah sticking it in there I, I don't think you'll find a, a single fat cat book without the crucifixion um, yeah and resurrection so that is our faith of Christ died, yeah. Christ is risen, Christ is coming again. Um, but then next we're doing a morning and evening prayer book. So I'm really okay. excited about that. So it's some, again, a resource where um, it's kind of like a flip book. So, so the one, one side looks like morning and you morning prayer. Mm -hmm. And when you open it, you, you read into morning prayer. And then when you flip it over like that, it'll look oh, like cool. um, nighttime prayer. So yeah. 
kids we found that like like my kids like love the whole flip book thing it's like wow, yeah it's two books but it's also like the two ends of your day and um beginning and ending prayer uh as a family um you know we've been doing this where uh we do uh, morning and evening prayers as a family we start and end the day together uh, with some really simple prayers and it's just like man this is the kind of thing that you remember you remember and mm-hmm. it sticks with you and so yeah. making that resource is going to be really cool that's the one i'm about to about to get started on so I'm really excited awesome. and then yes more to come you know we eventually want to do a, a lot of the other you know there's there's other christian essential books that lexham's done oh, and I'm yeah not ruining my it's husband's fine. background but yeah You're god's right. word kleinig did yes. god's word right so i'm like oh man gotta get kleinig to do the god's word yeah <laughs> that would be book. awesome and then um peter lightheart did baptism you know it's like really okay you know awesome stuff so I'm like, I know eventually we want to do more of those, but um, right now we're still kind of doing foundation. My dream is to do a, a storybook Bible. Um, so we're kind of like wanting to build momentum for that, but got to do, got to have the right that vision. That would be great. Yeah. That sounds so cool and exciting. Uh, well, tell us where, um, d- is there a specific date for when the Ten Commandments book comes out? And then how do people, when it comes out, how can people, I'm guessing all the normal ways, but. How do yeah. we find it so that we can buy it? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, as much as me, January, sometime in January okay. uh, is, what, in January. is what my memory tells me. Um, and you can, I know you can pre-order on both the Lexum website and Amazon, and I'm sure okay. there's other places you can pre-order, but I, I think it's up for pre-order now. Okay. Um, but I'd have to, I'd have to double check, but, um, but yeah. I'm sure by the time this goes out, it'll be up. So I'll, I'll make Great. sure I have a link for it. Yeah. Cool. That'd be great. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I, you know, just a little spoiler. I, it's probably, I think maybe going to be the, the best fat cat book yet. I think it's, it's offering the most, uh, something that you really can't find anything like it. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I think it's that's good to hear. I, I kind of thought that when I was looking through it too. And I think mm. maybe it's because of the way the Ten Commandments have been handled in the, in the past or generally handled like you were kind of talking mm-hmm. about um but yeah I don't think I've seen this approach to the Ten Commandments is that kind of what you're getting at a little bit yeah 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 and I think it's also just I think it just came out really good yeah it's <laughs> I think beautiful it's just, I think it yeah the words the the concepts um what Hal's done what Todd's done um it's probably some of my best art I'm like yeah this yeah is, this is special it's a special book it's good yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, Natasha. It's so good to chat and get to know you a little bit. And I'm uh, excited to get more Fat Cat books in people's hands, hopefully through those who watch this. So we'll see. Uh-huh. I'm Anything you guys come out with, I'm always excited to, to have and to, to read and also to have for my boys. So I'm really thankful awesome. that y'all are making these. Oh, thank you so much, Kelsey. And thank you so much for, for having me on here. This has been really, really fun. Outside Ourselves is a 1517 podcast. To learn more about all of our shows and all of our podcasts, please go to 1517.org forward slash podcast. I'll be back here in a couple of weeks. See you then. Mm-hmm.